Greg, if you shoot into a crowd with birdshot, you're going to hit the guy you want to hit. Or <laughs> you have to use a point two two with a sniper to hit you're the gonna, guy you want to hit. You're going to certainly hit something. <laughs> <laughs> but will you hit the guy you want to hit? Martin, that's a it's a very good analogy yeah. you're using. I think you're going to some to uh, some place with that question. Yes, I'm I'm going into niche markets. Um, how is it working out for you? And, and you've just come back from Indaba. Is there proof in the pudding? Yes. Um, looking behind you at the wall, um, you've got the home of Adventure Expedition Africa, which is starting this weekend. Uh, this is Trail South Africa, Trail Town South Africa. Uh, you've got the proudly uh, uh, proudly parade your colours or the pink lorry. Let your imagine take flight for the nice military festival. These are all uh, niches. There's the, the Jaguar Samoa Hill Climb, the Petrol Heads, the Nice and Art Festival for the Art and Culture, the Nice and Timber Festival. Um, and and th these are all niches. So now you've taken these niches to the Indaba, this uh, 2016 Indaba. How did it work out for you? It's working out very well. We started that last year yeah. and it's gaining traction. Uh, last year, when we started talking about cycling, some of the trade uh, representatives, the SA Tourism trade representatives, looked at us with big eyes. I think everyone understands golf, but cycling is the new golf. Um, school sports. Well, it's not really the new golf, though, because golf is golf. I mean, you, you know, you've got links golf and you've yeah. got, you've got yeah. landscape courses, but in cycling, you've got all sorts of different types of cyclists and, and yeah. all sorts but of different the whole, types. And that's what these guys have got to wrap their minds around. It's something that happens out there, it's a mode of transport. And um, they've got to wrap their minds around who do we approach. They refer to it as bespoke. But golf is a niche. Um, it's just so much easier for them, you know, it's a, it's a golf course. They don't ha have to know about the details of it. Whereas the, the cycling tour operators um, are ex-cyclists. Um, and they'd be very different if, 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 you, if you're going to the roadies or to the mountain. They're looking for different products. Yeah, they're different, different nuances. Experience. Different nuances. Yeah. And you have to know the, 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 the destination is to match the market. Mm -hmm. And this is where we, we often speak about being market ready. Yeah. So now we're getting a situation where we're founding and we're defining our unique selling proposition. And this is where our destination has to get together. We, we are saying to, to, for us to compete against our neighbors, we have to define who we are. And then we have to take who we are to the market and say, that's why you must come to us and not them. If you come to us, you're going to get what you want. If you go to those guys, you're going to get a hybrid of something. But um, Nisla can't be Barry Lyndon. I don't know if you remember the movie from, from uh, it's still considered one of the world's great movies, but it was advertised as Barry Lyndon is all things to all men. Um, Nisla Lyndon can't be Barry Lyndon. It can't be Barry Lyndon, but when you, it, it, it can be good cycling to a, a specific niche. It can be good golf to that golf niche market. It can be school, uh, it can deliver a product to schools. schools for the school an interesting, an interesting niches uh, on its own. 25,000 bed nights a year. That's what Meisner sells to schools. From, local, from a local market. Yeah. Thank you to Sports at Backward Point. But and Keith Kitchen. Oh, cool. and, and others. And, and uh, others. Okay. Yeah. So, but now at Indaba, you were, we were talking earlier, you said you had, uh, you had inquiries about Oak Hills Odyssey. Tell us about that. Well, it wasn't about Oak Hills Odyssey. It was about the, the niche market saying to us, um, we run the school, uh, we bring out schools. This is how many bring, schools we bring out. These are the schools we work with. And what can you offer us? And when I looked at the itineraries, they're all doing the typical thing. They're bringing out a, a hockey team or a rugby team, and then they're starting up in Kruger Park, going to watch a bit of game, playing a, a, a hockey match or a so rugby match, and then touring down there. So there's, not, there's no real difference. What we started doing is, first product we offered was the Odyssey, um, or an Odyssey version. We said, right, uh, we, we've got the home of the, the, the Expedition Africa running here. We can do a 21-day, 14-day adventure for you, and this is what it does for the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got an option. We can uh, team up with Oak Hill, they are f sort of feeding their way around it in terms of their delivery. Can, do they have the resources? We presented the case that our schools in winter um, are empty. They can come and teach here if they want to. They can occupy those schools. It's just a matter of us going to the school and saying, right, how do we work this, this out? And they are hugely excited about it to such an extent that we had extended meetings to the point of defining a product to offer to the, the school called Rugby in the UK mm -hmm. as a team building exercise for their rugby team when they when they um, pre-season. Schools is just one niche though, I mean, you've got all those other niches. Yeah. 
um, w were you approached by people who were not in niche markets at Indaba? I'm talking about tour operators. Did, did the general tour operator approach you? Or no. Were no. They all we had responses to In the Daily Indaba, we presented an advert that said, um, use if you're touring through Nasna, so this is the shotgun market, um, they, and that's what most people understand. And we don't need to go and delve too much in that market because when we go to Indaba, we must remember that our serious products are there. They've got the databases. They know exactly who they're selling to, what they're selling to. So they're probably selling better into those two operators than we can. What we've got to do is find the new two operators that come into the area saying, what is new? And we've got to reinvent ourselves. So just for example, um, one small little thing, when people come along and they say, um, what can we offer that's new to Featherbed? We say, heritage tour. But it still takes place on, on, on the, you know, it starts on Featherbed and then it comes into town. And Featherbed and us have been talking about this for some time. So we're not taking business away from Featherbed, we're reinventing the experience and offering them new content. Um, it's about reinventing yourselves. Um, and the, the tour operators don't come to you and say, oh, you are selling niche. They come to you and they say, what do you have new? You enter into the conversation and you say, ah, are you in the cycling market? No, no, I'm not. And I had a very, very interesting conversation with one of our uh, board members who is a tour operator as well and a guest house. And very often they say, the tour operators want this. Well, I want to tell you, I took one product, one niche market product, and uh, into the Dutch market because that director is in the Dutch market, uh, is Dutch. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I think it was five different tour operators offered them the same thing. And from the full spectrum, offered a different response to every single, um, to, to that one case, yeah. which tells us you cannot generalize with the tour operators. They are just like us. They want something new. Some of them don't want something new. Some of them want to stick to the, the tried and tested. Some of them are exploring new space. Some of them are cyclists. They, and and they, it's a revelation. Wow, I understand that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Let's go for it. And those that aren't cyclists goes over their head. Mm -hmm. The concept of selling our events and festivals as a, as a, a sort of a sizzle of the steak to, to operators is very, very interesting. A lot of them are saying, okay, so if I've got my tour at this time, um, we'll pass Nasna then. And what can they do? Well, you can buy tickets, you can do this, you can do that, load, load our app, we'll tweak you, um, uh, tweak you the, or Facebook you or communicate to you about what events are on. You just tell us what events you want to attend. And that, that was very, very exciting. From a responsible tourism point of view, um, that's very interesting too, because responsible tourism is about creating better places to live in and better places to visit. And people who follow the responsible tourism ethos are looking for authentic uh, experiences. And yeah. those, those festivals really do deliver those mm. authentic experiences. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And they want to experience the local art. They want to experience um, you know, the, the performing arts as well. They want to experience an, an extension of who we are. Um, one very, very interesting experience was a product called actual, uh, coming out of Suburu, um, Action Rentals. Mm -hmm where it's um, go and drive on the, on the, uh, off the beaten track in a Subaru. Um, it's a car rental company just focusing on Subaru. And we're entering into very exciting discussions with Subaru who are using their market databases to, to go out there. And that, that's, that's packaging. That's the thing about, about niche marketing is that you go, uh, to, uh, you go beyond the... Um, traditional or what you would think of as the traditional tourism sector you go out yeah. and you've done the example that, that that springs to mind is the uh, mountain biking and the work with squirt loop mm. uh, squirt loop is not in the tourism industry not at all they they, mm. they, they lubricate chains and and um, the nasa yacht company mm. is not in the tourism industry but they you, they lubricate sales well what, what's <laughs> actually, actually happening what's happening. actually happening there is these people are coming and spending money in our economy but they in our knowledge economy they're coming to the academy and learning and getting their skipper's tickets, etc. They're tourists. And they're buying houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One in three. One in three of them are buying houses. Yeah. But it's a huge market for Neisner because if you are on the other side of 50, suddenly you want to buy a yacht. If you go to do your, your tickets in your skipper's ticket in Durban, you're going to have a whole lot of 
20 year olds, 18 year olds, 17 year olds that you're doing your courses with. And it's so interesting that we are now selling this to the guys and saying, no, come in, come here and do your course here. First of all, you're going to get real experience. You, you're sailing in a real ocean. Okay. Uh, secondly, you're going to be teamed up with like-minded people. You're going to make friends and, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a holiday as well and it's working. And so that's, and, and that is the niche. Now we, you, you brought in, uh, the question of art just now, and that made me think of the second last question I want to ask you, which is please explain to us, or please tell us about the, uh, two, uh, emerging. Oh, that, that was really great. Yeah. Yes. It was interesting you because took Stanley we took Stanley Fritboom, who has got who, who specialises in First Nation um, heritage, mm -hmm. and then Peggy, um, who's very Peggy, well known. Peggy's left. Um, Peggy, Peggy's arts, Peggy's, uh, Peggy's African art and tourism. Yeah, she's an infectious person, mm -hmm. and in fact, we earned an SABC Live, SABC Africa Live um, interview mm -hmm. through her Peggy. because she's just so vivacious. The lady mm -hmm. saw her and said, "Will you be on my television show this morning?" It was absolutely worth it taking them to to Indaba. Um, the, you know, I she's, she deserves it. Peggy, uh, just before I interviewed you, and I put the uh, uh, I'll put the link in the doobly doo so that you can go and have a look at that uh, and and get it from the horse's mouth. But from the point of view of of of, uh, of Nisman and Partners, how does it benefit the town to have two SMEs like that at Indaba? First of all. It's speaking to LED objectives. It's um, it's taking people who have been part of that LED program, you know, those incubator programs, and what we've done is now taken them one step further and put them into the market, and and they they're an asset to our brand. Um, they are the real thing when it comes to taking emerging products out there. They engaged robustly with the tour operators, you know. It, it's changed their lives, I think. And um, you'd obviously know more. You just interviewed her, but. Um, what what a lovely person and it was worth every minute mm -hmm. and every rand uh, taking her there and I feel that that that's what what we I think that's the intention of um, uh, these SMME emerging product and development the word development but when you're developing a person into a route that you're that you have uh, when you're getting your your destination market ready for something a specific route and at the same time you're blending in a piggy or a, a Stanley Kritboom the development and the mar marketing go hand in hand and no longer do you have this one arm saying oh, I'm development and the other arm saying I'm marketing it's it's a symbiotic process and it actually um, enables you to engage uh, more robustly with with the tour operator and I think that that's key for me everyone wants to have a meeting and have a serious meeting at Indaba, how do you get the con conversation going? And if you've got real stuff and new stuff, and if you if you're having a um, a conversation that grows the tour operator or that grows and enhances the life of the SA tourism rep, you have a more um, engaging conversation and it's more long lasting. You you have a, you, it's easier. It's the foundation to a relationship that you're developing, and um, that's what excites me. Uh, that's what I've been looking for for three years, representing this organization. I've been brutally honest with, with this organization and other, um, the RTO and Westcraft said, what do we do? I want us to find our sweet spot at Indaba. Let's not lie. Let's not bluff ourselves. Let's not sit around here and actually have a party with each other. And a lot of those previous um, activations that they had, I took a, a seat back and I said, but this is all you, you're having wine and food and stuff and it's just amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. we, show me one person I can have a conversation with to bring business here. And it's, it's that honesty and integrity that has changed things and made us go and say, who do we speak to at Indaba? What is our job at Indaba? How do we get serious about what we're doing? And how does that impact on our economy? And I can honestly say that we did it this Indaba. Well, congratulations. That brings you to my last question. Um, I don't mean to glance over the congratulations because I genuinely mean it. But uh, my last question is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one. How did you think Indaba worked as, as, as a show this year and where would you like to see it go next year? Not for us, but for Indaba yeah. as, a, as yeah. a show. I think the concept of a trade show, getting real, is starting to happen. 
WTM, I believe, has woken in Dava up. Um, and regardless of what happened at Indava this year, it, uh, a lot of our products from Nasna had a good a, a good session. But they've been going for many years. Sure, but but the new guys, invariably, if you go and do the basics as a new person, you knew you've got a new product there. Um, in SA Tourism, set up things where some of our, our products were flown there for free and put up. Um, you know, they were offered everything on a platter. Um, what we, we are arriving at a very, very, very um, interesting stage because WTM is serious about us meeting the buyer and in Darva suddenly can't rest on their laurels. And um, I had an uh, interesting phone call with one of the big players that's on the shortlist. And we've had a relationship for many years. Um, I won't mention who that was, but, but they in the past have run the Indaba. And at, and at that time, I was consulting to them as well. So basically, um, what, what I'm excited about is that these guys are all looking for the edge. They're looking for a unique selling proposition. And they're saying, what do we do? How do we get everyone to hit that sweet spot? Um, and I'm very excited about that. Um, I think that, that um, next year is going to be exciting. Awesome. Uh, and, and one thing I want to say, I met with Airbnb there. Yeah. And, and that was a very interesting thing. Because if you say the word Airbnb, the majority of your members say they don't pay rates and taxes, the, the Airbnb people, they don't do this, they don't do this. And they're probably right. But did you know that we have got over 1,000 products listed in Nasna on Airbnb. Did you know that we are number three in South Africa in terms of our listing and the volume that we do? So the message that I've got to everyone is that the garden route is um, top of mind. We on the up in terms of business. We're in demand. And what we've now got to do is get serious. We mustn't rest on our laurels. We've got to go to the niches and to the, all these various things Regardless of what anyone feels about Airbnb, do the calculations of what they bring our economy. I mean, you, we don't have to engage with them. They're not a member of ours. They don't ask for any help. They don't do anything. But they bring, you know, just do the numbers. If there's a hundred people, uh, how many was it? A thousand. If there's a thousand people having one person, 50% of the time. And they did the numbers, I think it was 90 days, 60 to 90 days, they, they fully booked a year. 60 to 90 days. <laughs> some serious numbers. <laughs> and, you, you know, take Airbnb out of the equation and that, will those people come to us? I don't know. I, I don't know those things. I don't have the answers because Airbnb has been something that happens out there and, um, and I've never been concerned about it. But I, I, am, I use that as an indicator of the demand to Nisna. Nisna is enjoying the lion's share of business in the garden routes, and we've got the facts to show it. We've got Airbnb, we've got bookings.com, they're all showing that, if you look at their stats, they're all showing that we are enjoying the lion's share of visits to the garden route. That's very interesting, because as, as somebody who has operated uh, attractions, I was the first tour guide at Featherbed, as you know, and had my own attractions, um, uh, they are the people that will spend money on attractions. Mm. The people that are saving money on Correct. accommodation. Although Airbnb it doesn't necessarily mean they're saving money on accommodation, but, but you know what I mean. Well, yeah, you, you are right. Uh, when I started asking them about their other stats, um, and they said, well, we don't get those stats. I said, we'll get them. Then we can start having a conversation with yeah. each other. And I asked them all straight out, well, what do you want from us? How can we help you? You're ready. You've got a thousand people. What was <laughs> their answer? Answer? Well, they, they were quite surprised by they were, the lady came in and she said, listen, I've been warned about you. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you are going to ask me questions I've never been asked before and you are going to challenge me, so I'm, 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 I've come as prepared as I can. Um, so, we, to sum it up, Nasna, the brand Nasna, I think, had a very, very good Ndava. We were, we were in the daily Ndava, we had a good um, presence. Um, if I had to tick all the, the lists, yes, you know, how, did we put Nasna on the map? Yes. Did we engage robustly? Yes. Did we bring business? Yes. Did we bring business out of current and normal um, uh, sort of channels? Yes. Um, is that business tangible? Yes. Are we engaging with the buyers and will we link them to um, sellers? Yes. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Hopefully uh, we can have another one of these discussions soon. Thanks, thanks very much.